do not pass us by. We cannot function without you. There is nothing that we can do without you, Holy Father. Do not pass us by. As we have come in your presence, mighty Father, let the power of your name manifest tonight. Let the power of your name begin to move in a special way tonight in the name of jesus thank you lord father we recognize our sins our righteousness our wrongdoings and we come to you asking for mercy this night father have mercy on us according to your loving kindness according to the multitude of your tender mercies mighty god despise not the prayers of your children show us your mercy in a special way tonight we we'll hand over this prayer to you lord father the hour has come show forth your strength again in the name of jesus yes my lord we are connecting this prayer to the prayers of angels and saints in heaven we are connecting this prayer with a prayer that is taking place in places of prayer where the holy spirit is at work in fact we are connecting this prayer to the altar of god in heaven oh jesus father we thank you lord we give you glory because what you are here to do in this session is mind blowing we give you glory oh lord and so we cover ourselves with the blood of jesus the message and the messenger we cover with the blood of jesus we cover our hearts with the blood of jesus and we're asking god tonight let his power prevail in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen thank you jesus my friends in christ i have the pleasure tonight to welcome every one of us to the the 12 part 2 of the series titled Summon That Tyrant. And uh, we are following our prayer manual, The Invisible War, Volume 2, by Brother Wakwe Chuku. Maybe you are listening to this part two without partaking in the part one of this message i would advise that you first go through part one of this message and then progress to this part two as we have gathered this night to worship our God, God is here to confirm to us that we have made the right choice to be with him. In this midnight, God has come down to his altar. The altar of God in the hearts of Jesus and many ministries is the altar that Jesus established on Calvary, where he made the sacrifice of his life and where he defeated the devil completely. As we progress in this message this night, great things are going to happen. God is going to reveal deep mysteries to us and as the holy spirit opens our eyes we walk on the leadership of the holy spirit and so mighty jesus we hand over the session to you take control empower your son and put your power upon him let him minister in your name and let your anointing flow mightily through him. Father, even as the message will be going on, let altars be catching fire. As the message is going on, just by ministration, just by teaching, let every evil altar begin to tumble and crumble 
in the name of Jesus. And let the spirits behind the, those, those altars begin to stumble and never to rise again. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, my dear man. My friends, I wish that to share the word of God with us uh, from Second Samuel chapter number 5, verse 21. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 21. And Bible says that the Philistines abandoned their idols there, and that David and his men carried them away. I repeat, Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 21. I'm actually reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. The Philistines abandoned their gods there, and David and his men carried them away. Now, let me tell you something. This message is deep, very deep. Now, After David was made the king over Israel, the Bible says that the Philistines were not happy that David had been made king over Israel. And without David doing anything against the Philistines, they came after him. They came after him. Second Samuel chapter 17 says, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. The question is, what was that stronghold? He went to a place of prayer. David went to the altar. David and called himself on the power of the altar of the God of Israel. All right? And it was there that David inquired of the, of the Lord in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 19, asking God, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. So from that point, David went to fight the Philistines. Now this was not the war between David and the Goliath, this was a different war. Went to fight the Philistines. Amen. <laughs> hey! When David fought the Philistines, the Lord gave David the victory. You see, when God is behind any situation you're going through, God is behind you in any situation you're going through, gives you victory. So God gave David victory over the Philistines. Okay? Now, where we read today in the opening scriptural message of this uh, very session, being Second Samuel chapter five verse twenty-one, what we hear there was what David saw when he came to the battlefield. Already, God had given him victory, and uh, David had defeated the enemies. The enemies left the the weapons. The they used to come to the war. They left some of them and they fled away. Some of them died. Some of the enemies died. Some others flew and, and fled, okay? Now, there were certain things that the Philistines left behind. And if I ask you what were those things, I, I can bet you, you will guess wrongly. You will say, oh, but okay, maybe the good they came with, no? Or oh, maybe, uh, the spear, the javelin, uh, the weapons of war they came with. Okay, they actually came with those things. So if you say that, that's right. But let me tell you something. There is something that you are not likely to guess. 
and that was the fact that the Bible says that in Second Samuel chapter five verse twenty one, that the Philistines abandoned their idols. The Philistines abandoned their idols. How do you explain that somebody was going to war and he carried idols? He carried the gods of his nation, gods of the Philistines. How do you explain that? He tells you that idols we are powers the enemies we are using against the people of God. So they went to war with the idols. So that the power behind the idol, that is the gods, will fight the enemy. I've told you that spiritual war is God versus gods. I tell you this thing. I, I'll keep repeating it so that you know that I'm serious. So actually, people of Israel came to war. But in the matter of these times, they came to war with their gods. With the altars of their gods. Was it not the other day that Goliath was cursing David in the name of the gods of the Philistines? See, today, there are forces contending with you, but you don't know there are, there are, that the person fighting you may, be, may have come against with his or her own gods. I used to live in Tennessee, and there was a time I had a, a postdoctoral program in one uh, research, uh, research organization. And uh, I wasn't living there in that city with my family uh, because it was a long drive from home. So I had to rent a house, an apartment, and I was living there. During the weekends, I go back home. That house I was living, the landlord who discovered that I, I had some uh, life of piety. So he came to me and told me to preach to one of his friends. His friend was a Cuban. A Cuban. And he said that this is a friend practices and I've forgotten the name of that power he told me about. I've not heard about that before. And he said that cult he belonged to, that they worship a dead body. And he said, in his house, he said, there is a dead body. I mean, this happened in this world, I'm telling you. This world is a place of mystery. They embalm the dead body, keep it in the house. Now, every night, this man would treat that dead body as a wife. I tell that this happened in this world. And if anybody provokes him, he will summon the spirit of that dead person to go and attack the person that provoked him to anger. I ask him, are you free to for me to um, comfort him on this? He said, yeah. So I invited him to my house. And I began to preach to him the Bible. Uh, he said, you know, <laughs> Pastor, don't bother yourself, you know. Uh, everybody must not be Christians. You know, there are other ways you can also worship God. Well, long story short, um, this uh, discussion with him came to the point of this natural now coming up. And uh, he wasn't denying it. Uh, that is his own religion. 
okay, worshiping the spirit of the dead. He, he was married because he already had a covenant of marriage with the dead person that was embalmed. I tell you, this happened in this world. I can't say that enough. I preached to him. I still remember when I was preached to him 3 p.m. during Divine Mercy Hour. He could not listen to me. He preferred to continue worshiping that God. So I asked him, what do you gain from this you are doing? No, he told me. He said, nobody messes up with, messes up with me and goes free. Said, if anybody thought messes up with me, I will go there and I will I will, I will send the, 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 my, the spirit to go and deal with that person. Now, what this Cuban man had in his house was an altar. Oh, yeah. And if you're having a problem with such a person and you are not in God, you are finished. I mean, you are finished. Because why you think you are sucking such a person from job, terminating because he did want another in the job and you suck the job, he sucked him from job, he is going to consult his power to come and fight you. And how can you stand him when you're not in Christ? Evil authors. Evil authors. I was talking with a sister in this ministry some time ago. Uh, this was actually last year. Her place of work, she was working with the people who practice voodoo. And she said, brother, if you come to my office, Almost every table, every office would have um, voodoo. And they don't hide it. They hang it on their walls, hang it on the corridors, hang it on their, beside their chairs. If you ask them, you say, this is my protection. And of course, you know, America is a place of freedom. People have imported evil power, evil authors to the land. In this America alone, you have no clue how many gods that are in this land. Gods. There are people from different countries, different cultures have imported into this nation. I, went, I once came to pray for a family. Uh, they are members of this ministry. And when I came there, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I have never been to China, but you know what? It was as if I was in China. You see altar of Buddha everywhere. Vehemently brandished. And when I came to the house, oh, I, I felt the, the weight of heaviness in, over the family. I asked myself, how long would this people fight this family? fight this battle. Their finances were caged. They were living in misery. And I prayed and said, God, do something to take these people out from this place. God answered that prayer that way. Opened the opportunity for them which after that prayer that brought in the finances that took them out of the place, and they, they now bought the land and built their own house. And living in a place that, when I came to the place of pray, I had to name that place the house of Bethel, a place to encounter God. Because of what God used, the prayer of uh, a sinner like me to do for them, they dedicated one, one room in that house. I <laughs> said, so this is the room of our work <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey! They were living in a place where men were releasing spirits from their altar or altars. And these spirits were suffocating the children of God spiritually. Because when God took them out from that place, they began to see the light of the day. 
but not without the power of God coming to break the power that has been intercepting their freedom. Other friends, we are facing a very serious matter. Some time ago, one of us who moved into a house, things began to move contrary to expectations, things going down, uh, bad dreams, terrible dreams, people are moving in the house, you don't see them, uh, and uh, she's trying to understand what's going on, no, nothing. Then one day, as prayer prevailed, God revealed the altar of Buddha in the house. It, it, it didn't make sense to her. The way she began to investigate who lived in that house before her, it was a Buddhist. It was a Buddhist who set up an altar, a, a, the altar of Buddha in the house. When the person was living, the person also moved, carried, physically carried the altar away. But spiritually, the altar is there. You don't take altars away just by taking the, uh, moving the altar, no. It is the power, it is the power that matters. It is the power that matters. There are so many people, their forefathers worshipped gods. And these altars, they worship gods and all that have been destroyed. And even trees and forests have grown there. Yet the power of that altar was still acting, messing up the people. It is not going to destroy altars physically that destroy the power of the altar. That's the mistake. Many, most people, especially the modern day uh, 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 prayer groups, you know, uh, they, they will say, oh, we are going to destroy the altar in this family. And they come there and begin to take uh, water, I mean, knife and uh, things that begin to cut that things down, burn things. If those things were done without a spiritual backup, it is a kangaroo. It's just a joke. You can pray. It is the power of prayer that destroys the potency of an altar, of an evil altar. When you destroy the altar spiritually, mess it up, destroy the powers, devote the powers that have been sponsoring the altar. Aha. Now, when you burn it and destroy it, you are uh, just disposing it. Evil others. Unfortunately, many of us are bringing these others into our lives, into our families, without knowing. Without knowing. I'm telling you. <laughs> there are certain clothes that you wear. I'm not trying to frighten you, but I'm, it's not good I say the truth the way it is. There are certain clothes that you wear, you're not supposed to wear. There are certain rings you wear, you're not supposed to wear. You're not supposed to wear. Because they have come from an altar of darkness. There are certain foods you're not supposed to eat. What do you expect of somebody eating a food sacrificed to the altar, to the evil altar? The person is the partaking of the covenant of that God behind the altar. People get initiated that way. When you eat of that food of the altar, of the evil altar, you have begun to communicate spiritually by way of covenant with that spirit with, behind the altar. Many times we buy things that look beautiful. But we don't know the power behind them. A young man bought a frame frame of, a, of a, 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 a small boy who was crying. The frame portrays a picture of sorrow. Many of you have seen that frame. 
and this frame, um, people were selling it. People sell it. People sell it. They put it in the houses. And when this young man brought the frame into the house as part of the collection, problems started in the family. That house caught a fire at some time. Now, before the house caught fire, he's, he lost his job, he became sick, everything about him got messed up, and the house caught fire. For so many years, there had been a pattern of people that had that frame in their house. Now, Oh my days! Somebody took note that there is a pattern of sorrow that comes to people who have this portrait. And they began to research on the original uh, artist who drew that historical uh, artwork. And guess what? The person do it. The person who was already, the person already died so many years ago. The person was a grand master of an occult kingdom. People were buying his artwork, motivated by decoration of the houses. They, they don't know they were buying sorrow. When you buy it and your house catches fire or you lose your job, or you become sick and you, you, you crumble, then have you been? What you have done was to use your money to buy an altar that was killing you. And you are going outside to look for help. You don't know that what is causing your problem is inside your house. In fact, that you were the one that imported the problem into the house. So the, the, the person or uh, the group of people who did this research had to investigate people who had had that altar, I mean, that uh, frame in their houses over years and uh, made a documentary and uh, came up with uh, something that was common, that people that had this, look at what happened to them. It may not be everybody that had that at work that will have something uh, noticeably bad. Some of them may have died in accident, nobody would know what killed them. Some of them may have had one problem or other that was not so visible. But at least this research showed that there was a pattern of casualties that people who engaged in this or who bought this very artwork had. And the root was occultism. I want to tell you something. The world of, of art, the world of art, A-R-T, the world of art, including music, is something that many Christians have not questioned themselves. What is the power behind this artwork? Or what is the power behind this music? There is a great power in music. Very powerful power in music. Music can move God. Move God mightily. And God will answer you expressly. Music can also move the devil to move and attack people. Don't forget that Lucifer, that is now devil, used to be in charge of music in heaven. Music is powerful. Art is powerful. Look at what God told Moses to do, to make an art of a snake. And David, uh, Moses made an, uh, a bronze image of a snake. That's an art. It was, when it was lifted up, people who were beaten by the snake, when they looked at that art, they got delivered. There is a power in art. And an art has an altar. 
Is that an author of God or author of the devil? Why do we set up and uh, use angels, statue of angels, statue of Jesus and Mary and all holy ones are the altar of our God? It is simply to tell you that there's the power behind the arts. In demonic altars, you have evil things too. You have author of Buddha. You see author of Hindu and all that thing. They have a in the altar, you see snakes, you see bulls, and so on and so forth. Altar is very, very deadly. When I was graduating from, from my doctoral program, there was a death that took place in my school. I cannot forget that death. Each time I remember that death, oh my goodness, so disturbing. One Indian girl, oh, very beautiful girl. She had 4.0 in her PhD, very, very intelligent. Just as she was graduating, she died. This girl was, was confiding in a friend of mine that every time snake is after her in the dream, she wake up screaming, every night snake is after her. And this, my friend, told her, hmm, maybe uh, since you're a Hindu, you know, you people worship snakes. It, it, it could be that the, the snake spirit, the author of the snake spirit is attacking you. But you know, those things don't make sense to her because Hindus, they don't believe in deliverance. And of course, they don't, that Hindu is not a living God. Just when she finished her dissertation, hit her record, got the job, need to leave for the school. To leave the school, fire caught in her room and she died. The power of the altar. The power of the altar. I was visited a lady, uh, not a member of this prayer line, many years before I even got into ministry, actually. She was well to do. Came from a very rich home, very educated. The father-in-law the head of the father-in-law, that's the husband of the father of the husband, the father of the husband, rather. The head of that man, the head of, of, of the of the in-law, is in the currency of my country. That is for you to know the family I'm talking about. She invited me to have to pray. Um, <laughs> now, at, at, at the point she invited me to pray, her husband died. The, the elder brother to the husband died, who was a virtuous of a prominent university in Nigeria, died. And this her husband was now running around for the burial of the brother. Only for him to also die. So two brothers in much of And uh, it was a very big, uh, a very big man. A very big obstacle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. All right. So my friends, as she was trying to recover from the shock that she lost her husband and lost the brother-in-law, then she also last lost her own child. Her child, her son, who was in the United States, was swimming in a, in a swimming pool and got drowned. How many people die in the family now? Three. This woman lost her joy. As I'm talking to you now, I still remember when she was asking me, brother, what have I done? What have I done? So she invited me to the house to pray. When I came to her house, oh my goodness. I saw artworks 
of several type of demonic things you can ever. I mean, there's no way. If I take the picture sent to you, you will you will wonder why would human beings buy this kind of thing. Things that you see and it's glaringly clear that this is demonic. There were so many of them everywhere in the house. So I told her sister, why, what are these things doing in your house? I say, oh, you know, my, my husband, where, uh, when, she was alive, when he was alive, he traveled to many countries and he was buying all these outfits. He was buying them. Brother, this is so expensive. It's so expensive. Mm. As a sister, would you consider to dispose of this? And say, oh, bro, this is so expensive. <laughs> it was clear to me that they had imported altars of different gods into their family. And those gods. Those authors, we are speaking curses over them. And as I was talking to her about it, you know, uh, to consider to dispose these things, and she couldn't make up her mind because they were so expensive. Now, she told me something that I don't love really because, you know, that does her laughing though. And she said, Oh, brother, let me tell you the dream I had in the night. And I saw dead people, and they were beating drums. And I was dancing, and they were beating drums, and I was dancing. And the way she was demonstrating the dance made me to, <laughs> to burst into laughter. I said, sister, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't even know what it means. I just enjoyed the music. So much education without the spiritual knowledge is illiteracy. I said, sister, how can dead people be beating drums for you and you are dancing and you were enjoying it? Meaning that there is a fellowship you have with them that need to be broken. Wow, is that what it means? And she was just laughing and laughing. She laughed over it. It wasn't long after that uh, meeting, I had opportunity to travel to the United States. So I came to the United States to settle. Few weeks after I came to the United States, I hear that she herself also died. It was a shock to me. I said, wow, Kira, what happened? She took off from an airport in Port Harcourt in Nigeria, heading to Abuja, which is also in Nigeria. And the plane had a problem with the air. The legs could not come out. You know that when the legs of the of the plane could not come out, how can the plane land? That's already casualty. That's dangerous. So there was tension in the plane. Well, praise God. At the end of the whole thing, uh, trauma and the cry and the, all that, then the the problem uh, got arrested and the plane now landed. And people were so happy. So people who shared the same problem cried together. They became friends when they came down. So her friends, she made the, she made it, when they landed, they were happy. So they now decided, some of, herself and some of her friends now uh, decided, okay, let, why don't we, since we're going to the same part of Abuja, why don't we just rent a vehicle and then continue our discussion in the car? And they rented a vehicle and they were moving, discussing that that vehicle had an accident and uh, or they all came out, nobody was wounded, praise the Lord. They rented another vehicle. And uh, that was, they began to discuss again on the way there was another accident, and uh, and the only one person died in that accident, and that was her. That was how she died. And when I heard this news, it was heartbreaking to me because I knew that something was wrong in that family that could have been prevented. But so much education, so much knowledge, so much money. Sometimes we we have so much of knowledge of the world. Uh, and become fully ignorant of the things of the spirit. And that is killing most children of God. So, my dear friends, you know, I, I don't know why God is taking me to all these stories, but it is to portray the fact that there is a power in order. And that many a time we are importing these problems, these authors, into our lives unknowingly, 
unknowingly. Okay? Then I let the call and I say, brother, check what I text you in the message. I text you, it was a, a ring, snake ring. It was a snake, but it was made a ring form. All the aspects that would be following the person's life, snake spirit. I mean, I could talk much and more and more and more on this, but what I want you to know tonight is that altars, evil altars are evil. And the day can mess you up. We need to act on the power of God to summon the powers of the evil authors to the author of God for total destruction. The author of Jer- 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 Jeroboam, as the Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4 to 5, caught to fire, burnt into ashes, got destroyed. Because the power of God came to attack the altar. The altar was an altar that was raised against the man of God. But God of the man of God intervened. So I don't know the altar that can be raised against you, against your family, against your destiny. But tonight, 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 let the power of the altar of our God. Let the altar in this ministry, the altar that God has erected for us and sent for us in this ministry, answer our prayer. Let that God answer our prayer. Destroy such evil altars against God's people, against your life. Friends, like King Jeroboam, the Philistines came to the battlefield to fight the Israelites with their idols, with their terms, with their altars. Remember, Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 21. That was our reading. The opening reading for this message. And when I was explaining that reading, I made it clear that when the three times hear that David was made the king, of Israel. They gathered against him. They began to plot on how to kill him. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 17. In verse 18, David ran to the stronghold, a place of safety, and asked God, what do I do? Should I fight or should I retreat? God said, go, fight. I'll give, give, give them to you. He fought, conquered them. The enemies ran away. Their causes were littered everywhere. But peace they left behind were charms. We are idols. All right? We are altars. Coming, the enemy to come to the war ground, to the battlefield, with idols, with the charms, with altars, tells you that there is a power in those things. But you know what? The power of our God is supreme. You see, when we say there's no power in the charms and all that, things, what we're trying to say is that compared with the power of God, I do not have power. But don't tell me that those don't have power. <laughs> they have power. But their power compared with the power of God is, is, is nothing. Amen? It was one of the means which the wicked uses against the righteous. And that is to summon them to their evil altars. To come to fight the children of God with idols and charms and altars. I, 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 I met a young man who was into uh, women a lot, you know, large women. And uh, then uh, he, one day he, he carried a woman that carried charms. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? Because nobody preached to him. <laughs> Before I could even preach to him, he, he swore. <laughs> He swore if God if God brings him out from this one, he, no more again to, to that kind of life again. Hey brother, this woman her her paws her paws were full of charms. Paws that used to contain lipstick and this were full of charms. And she didn't hide it from from her. And she didn't deny what it meant. I meant mean, these are my charms. Can you imagine the fear in that man? That person, that stranger, you are going out with, do you know the power the person is carrying? (laughs) 
Jesus. But I pray, let me make it clear tonight. Those in the kingdom of darkness cannot only monitor people from their altars or summon the spirit of people to their altars, but can also project evil forces to get out and they harm people. All right? Just a few days ago, I was leading somebody into Christ uh, who had lived much of her life in practicing of voodoo. And I asked her, how many people have you killed? Have you killed anybody? And she said, brother, uh, not directly, but indirectly. Because my my men, my group, I reported the matter to them and they, they took it they took it up. So they told me that the person they've killed the person and then the, the, the people died. She didn't do it directly, but she reported the matter to her group. There's nothing I don't hear. She went to her voodoo court and they reported the matter and the and the court took it over. You see how the court kingdom works. If, if you touch any of them, they come against you. But look at the children of God. We need education, I tell you, spiritual education. A, a, a member of the church is under attack. Other people will be laughing at them. Maybe because of the evil he did. There was a time attack was all, so much against me many years ago, before I got to the ministry. I was a member of my prayer group who knew about it. You know what she told me? She said, brother, uh, why this is this happening to you now? You know, are you sure you're praying well? You see? People will be gossiping in the church instead of helping a brother that was, that was under attack. You don't know that touching a child of God should provoke the prayer of the church to save that person from that attack. That was what the church did for Peter in Acts 12, when they came to kill Pilar, Herod, imprisoning Peter to behead him. The church was praying and said, Peter will not die. And Peter did not die. Because what touched Peter has touched the church. By the way, he is the head of the church. The key, the, upon him, the Christ has given the key of the church, mind you. Friends, we are dealing with an important subject tonight. Many destinies have been nailed down to stagnation by way of summoning them to demonic authors. I once listened to the narration of a man's confession whose evil author was an airport from where he flies out to attend the night meetings of witches and, uh, and from where he, he also uh, flies to attack people. In fact, there was a case of a, a man, an old man, he had seven sons, he killed six of them. He wanted to kill the seventh one, who is in the United States. Meanwhile, this man never came to the United States. The man lives in Africa. But the, the, the son, a, a mechanical engineer, PhD, uh, was of, of great importance to the company. And he became so sick that the company has spent so much money on him over years. Um, and nothing was coming forth, and then they had to retire him. And the hospital gave up here in United States, and he was taken back to Africa. When the father was dying, the father was saying, I was the one that killed my six children, and I wanted to kill this last one, and I couldn't kill him. So I, I, when, I, when he was proving stubborn, I messed up his job. I made him sick. Uh, so that he will, he will mess up. The, the son said, Daddy, you are out of your mind. Daddy, you are hallucinating. You, do, where have you come to the U.S.? Do you have a passport? Do you have a visa? Do you know my... Where, what, what? By the time the, the father told him the, the room, how his house was, how the room, everything, he was convinced that the man came to his house. They couldn't understand how he came to his house. The father said, I come with the husk of the of the... Uh, of the uh, uh, peanut, peanut. You know when when you get a peanut, you you the part that uh, usually blow out for dried peanuts. You blow those ones out. The, those ones are fly in the air. You know those. He said he said that I spiritually enter into those husk of the peanut and fly in the spirit, and I, I come to you. Know, I don't need visa. I don't need passport. I don't need airport. I don't need airplane. 
after the man said those things, then he died. Okay? This is mystery. That is how powerful, that is how deadly an evil altar is. But praise be to God that we we'll have a greater altar. And that's the altar of Jesus. <laughs> but friends, there is the power behind every altar. King Jeroboam, an unbeliever, knew that there is power behind the altar. Many Christians are yet to realize that truth. If we know the power of God's altar, then we shall boldly confront every demonic engagement against us, running to our altar, praying at the altar. <laughs> Your altar of prayer can intercept demonic projections. Okay? But friends, let me tell you something. Evil altars are real. And I am not mincing words. They are real. I once had a vision in which I saw a, a lady standing helplessly before a, a spiritual judge presiding over a spiritual court session uh, taking place at an altar of judgment against uh, that sister. I mean, this was a vision. Okay. I hear the counts against her. And before she could open her mouth to say a word in defense, the spiritual judge declared a sentence against, against her, saying, you have been sentenced to remain single forever. I, I, I still remember as I hear that declaration, that verdict against her. And I saw her crying. She was crying bitterly. Poor lady. What happened is that the spiritual judge is a spiritual tyrant, okay, mortgaging an evil decree against her, against her life, against her destiny, against her marriage, just to cripple her. Oh, Makaraba Shere Baba Sundaya Baba. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh! People of God, is there a possibility that there is a, a spiritual setup, an evil altar setup against you? May God answer with the prayer and destroy their power. Oh! Jesus. What is the altar against your family? What is the altar against your children? What is the altar? Ay, 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 ay. What is the altar speaking against you? That altar must catch fire. That altar must fire. That altar must catch fire. Rikete makaya basekete. Let God destroy the now. Marine de yebote. Let God pull down every evil altar speaking against you in the name of Jesus. Aha. Evil altar. Evil altar. Evil order. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Rama Kurubush de Kereba Basin de Yaba. Doko Siyama Kerebo Sundu Yaba. Every other judgment against me and my family. Let the other receive any gold. Fire. <laughs> A young lady went home with her son. His son was born in the United States. Haven't had an experience of home. And was taken home to see her people. In the night, this was the story of the, wife, of the mother. In the night, <laughs> this child screamed, hey, mama, mama. That's all. That's all. From that day to today, that boy is almost the same person. I'm telling you. Evil order. 
So this lady that I, I just shared with you, her story, there was a, a spiritual setup mortgaging an evil decree against her life to make sure she does not get married. And the court session concluded on her and decided. <laughs> to cripple her life, to mess up her life, to destroy the power that God has put into his or her life. That it shall not be your story in the name of Jesus. So I am praying for somebody tonight. Every organized water that has been set up against your life. Take up against your destiny. May all of them be destroyed by fire. May all of them be destroyed by fire. Let them begin to catch fire right now. Let them begin to catch fire right now. Every evil altar that I've been set up against my life, let them begin to melt. Let them begin to melt by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them begin to melt right now. Let the fire of God destroy them now. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Let God destroy every evil altar that has been set up against you. Let them be crushed by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. This lady that I shared with you her story, as of the point of this revelation, she was single. She had gone to many places of prayer to break out of that captivity. And when God revealed this to me concerning her, I knew that there was an altar against her marriage. There was an altar raised against her that she would not get married. I told her this revelation, and I told her we're going to pray. We embarked on 119 days of fasting and prayer together. Ah, it was volcanic, very eruptive prayer. Very corrosive and dangerous prayer. At the end of that prayer, God broke that covenant, that yoke, that info, that altar was destroyed. And today I'm happy to tell you that she's married. Praise the Lord. She was married because the altar was destroyed. You may go from place to a place of prayer to another place of prayer. Jumping from one ministry to another ministry, church to church, if the matter is not dealt at the root, you are wasting your time. I still remember how many places I've gone for prayers and deliverance, but God revealed the source of the problem. And because the source of the problem was revealed and the, it was addressed, the period, the matter was solved. The matter was solved. <laughs> was summoned to a demonic judicial system for judgment and condemnation. She was sentenced to remain single for the rest of her life. What a wickedness. We may need to be reminded, oh my people of God, that the Jewish elders, the Jewish elders brought Jesus to, to Pilate's court and asked Pontius Pilate to judge and condemn Jesus accusing him of claiming to be the king of the Jews. They set up accusation against Jesus. They summoned Jesus to the court, to the altar of judgment. Okay? That is how it goes in the spirit. That is the way of the spiritual tyrants. To summon the children of God to a place of spiritual judgment and the condemnation. Even Pilate got summoned Jesus to the praetorium. Remember? John 18, verse 3. Read it. And you see that the Bible said that Jesus was summoned to the praetorium in place of judgment. Many children of God have been summoned to the praetorium. I'm telling you the truth. Is, is there a possibility that somebody hearing my voice now is going through a, a, a spiritual praetorium? Huh? Oh, when the enemy summons a child of God 
in the altar. The aim is clear. Judgment, condemnation, and affliction. Period. <laughs> it must be known that altars are the devil's assets against the church. Coincidentally, the altar of Calvary is also a spiritual asset of the church against the kingdom of darkness. So the devil has asset, and the, you, the church, will have asset also. That asset is other. Demonic asset is other. Altar of child of God is other. The asset of the child of God should be God's altar. That's our asset that we need to use to engage the enemy in the spiritual battles. You hear that? Spiritual tyrants cannot stand in the altar of our God. Prayer warriors are yet to fully realize that summoning the devil and his cohorts to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ is a powerful weapon of prayer against demonic forces. Am I permitted it tonight? Therefore, we should take advantage of this great weapon of warfare to disadvantage the evil powers against us. <laughs> but friends, let me make it clear tonight. We have no apology to make to the devil this night that we are going to summon them to the altar of Calvary, to the altar of God, to the altar that God has given to us in this ministry. Instead of them to judge us, they shall be judged, they shall be condemned, and they shall be destroyed. Every altar of God is one with the altar of Calvary. I've said it before, please. Let me talk about that. The effectiveness of this warfare strategy, that is using the altar, praying with the altar of God, or tapping into the altar of God, and summoning the enemy to the altar of God for that assertion, that strategy is based on the fact that upon his sacrificial death on the cross, Jesus Christ destroyed all the works of the devil, crushing his head and disarming him of his deadly power. That is just the secret. That's a theology. It was on the cross that Jesus Christ took away each and every judgment and condemnation and punishment passed on us by the devil. Yeah. Do you hear that? Therefore, while at the foot of the cross and they facing the cross or uh, the crosses uh, the four cardinal directions, we shall summon the tyrants from the north, south, east, and west to perish at the foot of the cross. In the authority of Christ, we shall summon to the altar of God for judgment every messenger of Satan or messenger of deity or strongholds of deities or deities empowering satanic altars shrines and temples and dominions that today by the power of jesus in the blessed sacrament let such evil altars and temples and shrines and sacred rivers and sacred mountains and forests be pulled down tonight in the name of jesus because of the importance of summoning the tyrants to the altar of god I wish to repeat myself to you. I wish to repeat myself again. Just to repeat myself as to portray this point. We must attack the enemy by boldly summoning them to the foot of the cross for judgment and destruction. One thing I've learned from deliverance. When I'm praying and I'm quoting the scripture, that's the praying with the word of God, the devil begins to react. Because the devil hates the word of God. I remember 
Jesus fought the devil by the word. It is written. Remember the 40 days of fasting and prayers of Jesus in the wilderness. And that thing that caused the devil to react strongly is when you tell him, I command you now in the name of Jesus to go to the foot of the cross. The, the spirit will begin to react. In fact, that is one of the ways I discern spirits. Somebody can be having a problem, and I want to know whether the, what is behind this is a demonic attack or demonic uh, presence of that person. I was, I was, I would begin to pray and say, I am connecting you, oh my brother. I am taking you now to the cross of Calvary. If that person begins to manifest immediately, you know that it's demonic. I'm telling you, that's one of my ways to discern spirits to know which one is from the devil. Right? You know why? The devil hates the cross. The devil hates the cross. So when you are about to pray and you say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or you take up your rosary, you want to pray the rosary, you say in the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit and fill the house of the faithful, you don't know the damages you have caused at that point. You don't have a clue. The damages you have caused. And I'm taking time by God's grace. Uh, God is revealing to me so many details, mysteries on this subject I'm talking about now that I'm putting into a book on the rosary. Um, uh, God is giving the wisdom and the, the grace to package a special writings on the rosary uh, so that you understand that rosary is simply a weapon of warfare. By God's grace, we have had two books on just the, uh, spiritual weapons, just the warrior's weapons. But God is giving us books just on rosary as weapons of warfare, deadly weapons. That from the beginning of the prayer of the rosary to the end, you are causing headache to the devil. Just holding the, the crucifix. You know how we do it. You know the crucifix that says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you have caused trouble already. You have caused trouble already, my friend. <laughs> hey! Jesus! My God says, we shall call upon the power of the Holy Spirit to blow away to the abyss. Or to the foot of the cross, every evil force projected to harm us, following the war tactics of uh, Prophet Elisha, it is a welcome uh, warfare strategy to summon the tyrants to the altar of God and strike them with the blindness. Remember that Elisha had to um, summon the, the, the armies of the Arameans in Second Kings 6, verse 18 and following, and uh, he, he commanded them to go blind. And uh, the power of God moved and made all the enemies blind. You can make that on a prayer. God is mighty. God is powerful. Yes, my Lord. And so, my dear friends, the Christ, having listened to this message tonight, we thank God for what God has done to us tonight. And as we are engaging in this warfare station of this prayer, we are calling on the power of God to move mightily tonight, to touch us in a special way, to fill us with the power of his presence. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing that is impossible with God, for with God all things are possible. And the power of our God is here tonight to fill us with his Shekinah and with his power and his glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the power of God move tonight in the name of Jesus. We are tapping into the prayers of Psalm 109. That is prayer point number four. As we are connecting to the prayers of Psalm 109, we are praying against every evil altar that have been raised against us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my God and my Father, as to Psalm 109, we ask you, Lord, do not be silent, O God, Father, for the wicked, the deceitful ones, they have risen against us with the lying tongues, they beset us with words of hate and attack us from all sides, Father. We pray that, O oh Lord, it's this prayer going on this night. May you reward them, O oh Lord, attack them, Father, release your fire against them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every accuser of the brethren against us, Father, may you stampede their plans and destroy their altars. For, O oh Lord, they have risen against us. Father, may you count us guiltless in the name of Jesus. May our prayers found the favor before you by the power of your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord, arise tonight and deliver your children, and do not allow our posterity to be cut short, O oh God. Let your power manifest tonight, and let there be marked healing tonight. Father, so many of your children are going through brokenheartedness, but Father, tonight may you locate them, touch them, O oh Lord. We are tapping into all the prayers of Psalm 109 as we are 
are calling on the spirit of the mighty God to provoke into action uh, the Psalm 109 that we are tapping to that prayer tonight. In fact, we are raising the altar called Psalm 109 and we are tapping into the prayers of the psalmist in that altar as we hold the horn of that altar tonight to bring forth our deliverance and liberation from the hands of darkness in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My dear friends, that brings us to prayer point number five. And this prayer point number five, we have been invited to close our eyes. This is just to make sure that there is no distraction. As we are closing our eyes, we are going to imagine ourselves at the foot of the cross. As we close our eyes, we conceive ourselves at the altar of Jesus Christ of at Calvary. Imagine yourself at the foot of the cross. This is a mental work, a mental prayer, and it's effective. If you have done this prayer very well, or if you have imagined this very well, then you see yourself at the foot of the cross. Myself, I am seeing myself at the foot of the cross, and above me is the body of Jesus bleeding blood and water upon me. For John 19, verse 34 says that somebody took a lance and pierced his side, and blood and water were gushing forth. And if you are right now at the foot of the cross, then the blood and water are now flowing onto you. And the God is going to bring full-scale healing and deliverance upon you at this hour, that every stubborn situation are going to be destroyed now, that every sickness in your life, be it cancer, be it a terminal disease, even if it is a spirit husband, all of them are going to be in trouble right now because the power of God, the power of the altar of God is going to destroy them now in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross and I submit to the authority that is in the majestic name of Jesus Christ. Yes, my Lord, open your mouth and pray now. This is prayer point number 5A, B and C and following. I repeat it now, 5A now. Stand to where place you are and begin to pray vehemently now and pray yourself to break through now. This midnight prayer is going to provoke a powerful visitation of God in your life in the name of Jesus. So now we go on oh, no, Remako Rebashe Rebakete. I stand in the presence of the mighty Jesus Christ. I stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus at the foot of the cross. And I stand here with my family members. I summon every member of my family to be at the foot of the cross with me here in the name of Jesus Christ. And I submit to the authority of Jesus Christ. I submit to the authority of his majesty. As I begin to make the prayer today in the name of Jesus, I ask God to lead me in this spiritual battlefield that I be delivered from the power of darkness, that my family be delivered from the power of darkness as I get into this prayer now. And in the name of Jesus, that I am arming myself with the power of God. I arm myself with the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And there is a power, great power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And that power is flowing right now. The power is flowing from the altar. The power is flowing from the altar. And that power of Jesus is coming against the powers of the devil that have risen against your life. Every stubborn sickness, every stubborn disease, every stubborn case, every stubborn matter, every stubborn demon that have been standing against you. It is on this cross that they were destroyed 2,000 years ago. And so we are tapping into the victory of Christ over the devil tonight as we are engaging the enemy at the foot of the cross. And we are commanding the enemy now to begin to receive the fire of God, the blood of Jesus at the cross that be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And calling on prayer point number 5C. Lord Jesus, I humbly prostrate myself at the foot of the cross. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, Rika Taya Baba, I prostrate myself at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son, the son of God, who came in the flesh. Yes, my Lord. And I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ, with the water that is gushing forth from the side of Jesus Christ. Yes, my Lord, I cover myself, my family, I cover my destiny with the blood of Jesus Christ, even with the blood and even with the water that is flowing from the side of Jesus. Let that blood and water begin to flow down. As the blood and water are mixing up, let God bring a divine mixture to bring solution to my problem, to the problems I'm going through in the name of Jesus. Every demonic element in my life, by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the cross, I command them now, now, right now, they come out and go to me right now. 
in the name of Jesus. The Lord that is moving against the powers of the devil, putting them down, destroying the enterprise in the name of Jesus. The power of God is flowing now. The power of God is flowing now. Let the power of God flow now. Let God deliver you now. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Break every chain and break every yoke. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus, and there is power in the blood of Jesus to break every chain. Every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus, let the power of God begin to break every chain now. Oh, Jesus, as we are the foot of the cross. The power of God is moving now. Oh Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may your own supporting power, powering your altar of Calvary and the altar of the prayer, begin to destroy all evil altars that are erected within two of them my radius from where I am now. Ay, 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 ay. We are destroying every evil altar within two mile radius from where we are, from where you are. Everything that occultic, every occultic altar around you, 200 miles radius from there. You may increase it to 1,000 mile radius if you want. And what we're saying is that once there is anything that is diabolical, that is operating within that radius, that all of them, and that altar, that charm, that incantation, is made important just by the power that is available for us to use now. The altar of the all surpassing power of God flowing from the altar of Calvary. And that power is moving now, destroying the altars, destroying the evil altars wherever they are. Let this evil altar destroy now in the name of Jesus. And that brings us to prayer point number 5B. Blood of Jesus Christ, protect me from all the attacks of the spiritual tyrant forces and from all their influences by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I close every pathway that have been opened or that have allowed the devil and his cause to get into my life. I close those pathways now by the blood of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I close those pathways now in the name of Jesus. I close those pathways now. Every pathway, every opening, every toll gate open in my life through the enemies that are trafficking into my life. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, I declare them closed now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the most precious blood of Jesus Christ, I, I annul every legal right, every legal ground that the enemy has over me in the name of Jesus. I expose myself to Jesus Christ now. I expose myself to God's divine radiation, emanating from the sacred heart of Jesus. Let the radiation, the divine radiation, emanating from the sacred heart of Jesus, begin to penetrate into my bones, into my body, and begin to destroy every cancerous cell, everything that is in me that's not bearing good fruit, every plantation of the devil in my life. Let the radiations of the sacred heart of Jesus begin to destroy them now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Ay, 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 ay. Therefore, I expose myself now 
to the Eucharistic Jesus. Prayer point number five, D three. I expose myself to the divine nation. Prayer point number five, D four. May the gushing blood of Jesus Christ cover my family. Let that gushing blood, the blood is gushing forth from the body of Jesus, from the side of Jesus. Let that very blood cover my family, cover my children, cover my relationships, cover my 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 friends, my household, and the, everything that I have in life. I cover them now, blood of Jesus. And let the blood of Jesus Christ bring upon me the manifestations of the victory of Christ on the cross of Calvary. In the name of Jesus, and let the rays of him from Christ's pierced hands envelop me and my family. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord. Prayer upon number five e. I tap into the blood flowing from Christ's head. Hey, that is the blood flowing from the head of Jesus. If you look at the head of Jesus, that head is wearing a crown, but the crown pierced his head, pierced the skin of his head. And the blood was gushing forth. And the blood is mightily moving now. And may the most precious blood of Jesus that comes out, comes out from the sacred head of our Lord Jesus Christ, the temple of divine wisdom, the tabernacle of divine knowledge, and the sunshine of heaven and earth begin to cover us now, begin to set us free now. Let the blood that is gushing forth from the sacred head of Jesus Christ begin to locate you now. Begin to flow unto you now, in the name of Jesus. Let that blood flow in from the sacred head of Jesus, from his sacred hands, from his sacred, sacred feet, from his sacred back, from his sacred side. Begin to locate you now. Masakaya Basekerebu. Please be take over now. Jesus, every marine husband, marine spirit, spirit husband, spirit wife, I cancel covenants with you now. Every covenant with you, I carry my cerebral cerebral. Any man having covenant with such spirit, let the power of the blood of Jesus begin to restore them now. Begin to restore them now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. The power of God is flowing now. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, we are not engaging in prayer point number five EI all the way to. I, 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 and even to be my sacred Sunday, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood from God's head, when the tongues pierce his sacred head, shoots my head from every fiery arrow of the evil ones, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. In the name of Jesus, the blood from Christ's pierced hands frees me from the chains on my hands, as the Bible says in Jeremiah 14, verse 4. And today, I will free you from the chains on your wrist in the name of Jesus. And so let the blood of Jesus flow from his hands, break every chain holding my own hands in the name of Jesus. Jesus, prayer point number five, E3. Oh, Jesus, the blood from Christ's pierced feet will break the chains that hold us back and throw off the ropes that tie us down. According to Psalm 2, verse 3, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Prayer point number five, E4. Mare Bokorobo Shereba. The blood from Christ's lacerated body, he heals me and destroys every sting of death. And by his wounds, by the lacerated body of Jesus, by the wounded body of Jesus, I am healed. By his wounds, I'm healed. By his wounds, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Rima Bokorobo Shereba. Is those the point of a five e five? Oh, Rebaba Shekerebu. The blood from Christ's pierced side covers me and my family, and we cannot be summoned by the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. And that brings us to prayer point number five F in the name of Jesus Christ. I am Sherebu. Jesus, yes, Sherebu. Even as I stand at the foot of the cross now, I am now commanding every demonic element to go immediately under the foot of the cross. My dear people of God, we are now summoning the enemies now. We are summoning their enterprise. We are summoning their, their agenda, all their agents, all, all their evil authors. We are summoning them now to the foot of the cross so that God will dispose of the enemy according to his holy will. Yes, my Lord. So we are now beginning to pray. With the prayer point number five F one and following, I bind all evil spirits hey, hiding in the air. Every evil spirit hiding in the water, hiding in the earth, 
or under the earth, hiding under under the infernal world, anywhere they are, let the fire of this burn them down. I bind them now. It's ours. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That blood of the bursting forth from the body of Jesus. I release that blood into the air, into the atmosphere, into the water, into the land, and into the fruits of the trees around me. So that the blood of Jesus will take control of everything happening in the ecosystem. In the name of Jesus. I, 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 I command all the powers of darkness to begin to perish right now. In the name of Jesus. It's my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, I bind all demonic species and all demonic spies sent against me from the headquarters of tyrants, spiritual tyrants. Ay, 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 ay. I command all of them to perish. I command all of them to appear, to be summoned at the foot of the cross. I let them perish there. <laughs> let them perish there. Let them perish at the foot of the cross. Hey! Jesus, the cross, the power of the cross is moving now. He destroyed them now. He destroyed them now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus, Masek, terrible. Pray with the prayer point number 5F3. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break, I shatter, and I cancel every curse, every betrayal, every enchantment, every spell, every trap, every lie, every obstacle, every evil arrow. Or evil arrows, every hereditary blockage that have been attacking me, known or unknown, let all of them catch fire. Let all of them be crippled. All of us that are manipulating my life, let them cease. Let them be consumed by fire. By the power of the altar of Jesus Christ, let such enemies be destroyed. Let them be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that is projecting evil desires into my life, making me to be thinking lawfully. I cancel them now. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. Let them receive fire. Let the fire burn them. Where is this all? Pray now, pray now, pray now. Every power bringing misfortune onto my life, bringing disorder into my life, let them be destroyed. Let them melt by fire. The fire of God is burning them. Let the fire burn them. Today, all the of God is fighting them. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, oh. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, eh. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, eh. This session is no longer being Holy recorded. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, eh. Destroy them, Holy Ghost fire. Consume We're sorry, them, but some Ghost participants fire. may be experiencing Consume temporary them, audio Holy issues. Our teams are working to resolve Holy this Holy as quickly Ghost as fire. possible. Consume them, Holy Ghost fire. Destroy them, evil altars power. Destroy them, Papa. Destroy them. Amen. Feel us, Lord, with your powers, Lord. Feel us, Lord, with your blood. Feel us, Lord, with your anointing power. We are ready. Feel us, Lord, with your power, Lord. Feel us, Lord, with your blood. Feel us, Lord, with your fire, Lord. We are ready. The recording has started. Feel us, Lord, with your power. This session is no longer being recorded. Feel us, Lord, with your blood. Feel us, Lord, with your blood. Feel us, Lord, with your 
us, Lord, with anointing power. We are ready. Father, fill us now with your grace, O oh Lord. Fill us now with a fire. Fill us, God, with amazing power. We are here. Fill us, Lord, with your power, Lord. Fill us, Lord, we are ready. Fill us, Lord, with your power, Lord. We are ready. You deliver Paul and Silas. You deliver Paul and Silas. You deliver Paul and Silas. You will surely deliver us. You deliver Paul and Silas. You deliver Paul and Silas. You deliver Paul and Silas. You will surely deliver us. You deliver Paul and Silas. Jesus, you deliver Paul and Silas. Father, you deliver Paul and Silas. You will surely deliver us. I have never seen any God like you, my God. Our Lord, seen any God like you, our God and our Lord. We have never seen any God like you, Jesus. Mighty God, we've never seen any God like you, our God and our Lord. You are the most high. 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 Jesus, you are the most high. You are the most high. Father, you are the most high. You are the most high God. I've never seen any God like you, oh, mighty God. Abba, Father, seen any God like you, our God, our Lord. Never seen anyone like you, oh, my God. Consuming fire. Who seen any God like you, our God and our Lord? You are the most high. You are the most high. You are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Amen. Arise, O oh Lord, let the enemies be slaughtered. Arise, O oh Lord, let the enemies be scattered. Arise, my God, let the enemies be scattered. O oh Lord, my God. Arise, arise, O oh Lord, let our enemies be scattered. Arise, my God, let our enemies be scattered. Arise, Jehovah, let our enemies be scattered. O oh Lord, our God, arise, 
in a mist of Lord, O oh God, our God, arise in a situation, O oh Lord, my God, arise in this hour, O oh Lord, my God, arise, arise, my God. Let the enemies be scattered. Arise, my God. Let the enemies be scattered. Arise, my God. Let the enemies be scattered. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Marriage will say the recording has started. Hey. My Lord and my Father, every gather up against this meeting, every satanic confederacy against this fellowship, they can stop what you have started to do, Lord. No altar raised against this prayer meeting will stand. Father, we know that we are in a battle, that you are our warrior. Be glorified tonight. Mark Ayaba, whatever place you are, stand up right and begin to enter into a prayer. The power of God is a blessed sacrament is living now. God is putting down every evil altar that has been raised against his children. Those altars are destroyed tonight. Those altars are destroyed tonight. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. The mighty Jesus, the blessed sacrament. He is moving now, pulling down all these forces of darkness. Jesus, your mighty God. Jesus, your mighty God. There is no God that is like you. You are the supreme God. Father, oh Lord, we know that this is a prayer that is causing terrible casualties in the kingdom of darkness. And they're not happy, but we don't want them to be happy anyway. Father, move in power and in glory. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. We tap into the blood of Jesus. That you flow from the head and the hand and feet and back and side of Jesus and by that blood of Jesus that you flow from his sacred head, may every power that are attacking our lives begin to be put down now, begin to be destroyed now, begin to be crippled right now. The blood of Jesus is the blood flowing now. The blood of Jesus is moving right now. That sacred blood is moving into our life now. Masha Kaya Baba, let the blood touch you. Let the blood sanctify you. The blood of Jesus Christ sanctify my life now. Begin to move into my life. Deliver my life now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Don't give up. Don't give up. We are commanding now all the satanic jurisdictions, satanic empires and emperors and em There is power, my Masakaya Baba, Rakote Kaya Baba, Mate Kete Kete Sakuti Reba, Mare Korobo Sakayaba, Yende Raba Kuteta, Rekaya Baso Kotorobo. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. Every power against your land, let them be arrested now. We bind all satanic spies that have been sent out to us to monitor our lives. We are commanding the man to be arrested. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shut out the powers of the enemy tonight. We break their necks. We cancel their causes and betrayals and encampments. We are destroying their prisons and powers. We are putting their networks down by the power of all their broadcasting stations and the transportation systems. We are grounding all of them tonight. We are grounding all of them tonight. We are grounding all of them tonight. In the name of Jesus. Aha! In the name of Jesus Christ, we cancel every satanic misfortune, every error of disorder, error of misfortune, 
Every out of shame, all our manipulations that have been projected at us, we cancel them now. We cancel them now. Every satanic attachment to my life, to the spiritual enemies, we cancel now. Yes, my Lord. We cancel, we cancel, we cancel. In the name of Jesus, I disengage myself today from any known or unknown association or relationship with the powers of evil. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Matthew Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have disarmed and destroyed the evil of his deadly power. Therefore, Satan has no power over me. Satan has no power over this ministry. Satan has no power over the family of God. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. You have done it. Yes, Lord. They don't want us to land safely, the prayer. But you have made us to land safely. The plane that took off has landed. Father, we give you glory. Worship, adoration belongs to your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, El We, You are awesome. Oh, Jesus. And that brings us to page 17. The St. Michael the Archangel prayer. One, two, three, go. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in, the, in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the ruin of souls. Amen. Page 18, the animal Christi prayer. That is soul of Christ. One, two, three, go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you again, O oh Lord. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come unto thee. That with a sense, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you for this night. Thank you for this warfare. Thank you for the terrible casualties you have caused them. Father, we appreciate you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, El Shaddai. King of glory, there is no one like you. Wherever pleased you are, begin to thank the Lord, for the Lord has done it. And as we are thanking him, we are covering the prayer of the Lord of Jesus. We cover ourselves, Lord of Jesus. We cover this prayer, Lord of Jesus. We cover the miracles we have received, the Lord of Jesus. Victories we have received, the Lord of Jesus. Now, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We cover all that God has used in the course of this prayer for the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are victorious. Oh, yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God. Who has given us victory? Oh, we are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done for us we are so blessed oh lord we give you thanks amen father we'll give you thanks and we thank you for all you have done and we are commanding all the spirits that have been sent into the abyss in the course of the prayer, never to come back, let them remain there. That the spirit that has been summoned at the altar of God and destroyed will remain defeated to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We also decree in the name of Jesus Christ that all the satanic altars that have been destroyed will never be repaired in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And any agenda to repair them, let it fail completely so that our testimonies will be permanent. Father, we appreciate you. The instruments you have used this night will cover with the blood of Jesus. The prayer network we're using and the service providers will cover with the blood of Jesus. All their towers and the exchange stations 
and the airways and the channels to cover with the most special blood of Jesus Christ. I will pray that anyone who replaced this prayer will get instant results in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My dear friends, what a wonderful night. <laughs> they were not happy, but anyway, we didn't want them to be happy. So they came to fight. This what, what happened this night is really an attack against the message that God had given us victory. I was talking with a sister uh, last week, and the sister was telling me what, what happened sometime last year, two years ago, when we were praying and in the midst of the prayer, everything began to mess up. So she said, in the spirit, she saw the demonic kingdom. They were so angry with us, and they said, you know what, let us go and they interfere with their frequencies and mess them up. There was a serious battle taking place in the spiritual realm. But anyway, God gave us victory and He continues to give us victory in Jesus' name. So tomorrow we are entering the 13th of our prayer match. The 13th. The 13th is on page 99 of our book, our manual. And the prayer point will be uh, prayer point number 11 and prayer point number 14. That is where we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. You don't forget that. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow, after Father Mado's session by 10, then we'll do our midnight session. That midnight session tomorrow is going to be dangerous. I'm telling you on time. It is going to be very, very what? Dangerous. So we don't want the devil to, to be happy. So tomorrow we are going to pray, real warfare prayer. And uh, so day 13 is all about Summoning the ter- tyrants. We're going to summon them full time tomorrow. And uh, so many prayer points to deal with tomorrow. So we have a little work to do tomorrow. But God's grace, um, the result will be so amazing. So that even if the prayer ends tomorrow, you're already blessed. <laughs> hey! May God bless you from Zion. I said to you, please, tomorrow, we're all going to pray for this ministry. Pray for this prayer line. You have seen what happened this night. That tells you how the enemy is not happy. So we pray that the power of God will continue to destroy them. Pray for brother, for God to strengthen me. This work is not easy, but God gives me grace. May God bless you mightily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All the instruments, oh Lord, that you have used this night in this message, I declare all of them blessed extraordinarily. Bless them one by one. Add more favor to them. You have answered them in the course of the prayer. I'm asking you, Lord, to answer, answer me on the account and answer them on my account. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We call ourselves of Jesus and we decree that no reprisal attack against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Goodbye.